Welcome back to Honest News. Well, this, folks, it's getting really exciting. Really, really exciting. While the world is getting ready for tribulation, some of us are getting ready to take our flight. Amen? We're getting ready to go up. Hallelujah. Getting ready to leave this world. Hallelujah. So, as we are getting closer to that day, to that time, the Lord is preparing us with his word. You can't attain to something you don't believe. So we're sharing you with you the word of faith so that your faith can be increased, so that we can go up together. Amen. So, <clears throat> turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 34. Awake to righteousness and sin not, for some have not the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. Awake to righteousness. <clears throat> There's got to be a death to the self-life. And when there is a death to the self-life, we will awake from that death to righteousness. Amen? There must be a death to the self-life. But some man will say, how are the dead raised up? And with what body do they come? Thou fool. That which thou sowest is not quickened, except it die. And that which thou sowest, thou sowest not that body that shall be, but bare grain, it may chance of wheat or some other grain. But God giveth it a body as it hath pleased him to every seed his own body. All flesh is not the same flesh. But there is one kind of flesh of men, another flesh of beasts, another of fishes, another of birds. There are also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial. But the glory of the celestial is one and the glory of the terrestrial is one. There is one glory of the sun and another glory of the moon and another glory of the of the stars for one star differeth from another star in glory so also is the resurrection of the dead it is sown in corruption it is raised in incorruption it is sown in dishonor it is raised in glory it is sown in weakness and it is raised in power it is sown a natural body it is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. And so it is written, the first man Adam was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. Howbeit that was not first which is spiritual, but that which is natural and afterward that which is spiritual. The first man is of the earth, earthy. The second man is the Lord from heaven. As is the earthy, such are they also that are earthy. And as is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. And as we have borne the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep or die. We shall not all go to the grave, but we shall all be changed. We're not all going to go to the grave, folks. Some of us are not going to go to the grave. Is that someone going to be you? It's a mystery. I show you a mystery. We shall not all die, 
but we shall all be changed. And the reason why Paul uses the word sleep instead of death or die is because he knows those that die in Christ Jesus or sleep in Christ Jesus are not dead eternally. Amen? In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. For in for this corruptible shall put on incorruption and this mortal shall put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that it is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. So Paul is saying that those that are going to experience the resurrection of the dead are being swallowed up in life. They're being swallowed up in victory. Mortal is being swallowed up in immortality. <clears throat> so, Paul is dealing with the resurrection from the dead here. But do we have to go the way of the grave? I think we've made that clear, and I think it's made clear in the scripture that no, we don't have to go the way of the grave to experience immortality. I think the scripture makes that very clear. So why is it that God's people tend to think that way? They think they got to go to the grave before they can see Jesus. Or before they can be with Jesus. Let's look at some more scriptures. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 3. If so be that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. Interesting. It's the same word that's used in the book of Revelation when the Lord says, You say you're rich, increased with goods, and have need of nothing. But I say unto you, you're wretched, you're poor, you're blind, you're miserable, and naked. Here we find that the word naked means that you're not clothed. Clothed with what? For we that are in this tabernacle do groan, being burdened. Not for that which, that we be unclothed, but clothed upon. That mortality might be swallowed up of life. What Paul is saying here by revelation of the Spirit is if we're naked, then we haven't experienced mortality being swallowed up in life. This is the only way to be clothed is when our mortality is swallowed up in immortality, or in life, in victory. Now he that hath wrought us for the selfsame thing is God, who also hath given unto us the earnest of the Spirit. Now we've received the earnest of the Spirit. Therefore we are always confident knowing that whilst we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. If we walk by faith and not by sight. If we walk by faith and not by sight. If we walk by faith and not by sight. Right? There's a condition. You've got to walk by faith to experience everything that God makes available. For we are confident, I say, and willing <clears throat> rather to be absent from the body is present with the Lord. So we understand that those that are naked in this hour, including ourselves, are those that have not experienced mortality being swallowed up in immortality, immortality or life. That means the church as a whole today is naked. Are you listening? We're not clothed upon. Now, the disciples experienced clothed upon with power from on high in earnest. They didn't experience the fullness. They weren't swallowed up. Are you listening? They were clothed upon with power from on high 
And so like Paul said, he was crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, he lived because Christ lived in him, lived through him. But that was only through the earnest. Are you listening? You and I in this hour have been promised the fullness, brothers and sisters, to be swallowed up in the fullness of the Spirit, the fullness of life. No mixture. Are you listening? What does it mean to be fully clothed? To be fully clothed with power from on high. Fully swallowed up. Now the other side of that is the lukewarm are going to be spewed out. But there are some in this hour that are going to be swallowed up. They're going to be swallowed up by the Spirit. They're going to be swallowed up by God. Hallelujah. Consumed. Devoured by God. And not obviously for destruction but that the Lord is receiving, accepting some in this hour that are not lukewarm or cold, but they're hot. Amen? Hot. So, is God going to consume you? Is God going to receive you? Is God going to accept you as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable which is your reasonable service in this hour? Are you going to offer yourself to God as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service? On a daily basis, offering yourself to God, right? Not talking about uh, human sacrifice here. You know that. Talking about offering our heart, our soul, our being, offering ourselves to God on his altar glory to the lamb people to give ourselves to God holy acceptable completely and that's not H O L Y that's W H O F you understand it's holy completely hold nothing back swallowed up by God and Paul said in him we live we move we have our being the Lord is not going to swallow up the lukewarm. He's not going to even swallow up the cold. He'd rather you be cold, he said. So then, because you're lukewarm, I will spew thee out into the tribulation hour. You're listening? The church as a whole is not going to be swallowed up. They're not going to be devoured by the Lord in this hour. They're going to be spewed out. In order to be spewed out, that means they had to be in Christ. They had to be. To be spewed out. Had to be. Why is it that that which was once received by Christ is now being spewed out? Obviously, something has changed that the very thing that God once received now is spewing out. Something has changed in that which he had received. Something that he had swallowed up is now causing him to spit it out. And he says, because you've become lukewarm. You were once hot. You were once on fire. But now your temperature is going down. You're cooling off. You're not on fire for God like you used to be. Amen? You're not burning anymore like you used to be. You're not sharing me like you used to. You're not uh, studying. You're not eating the word like you used to. You're not praying. You're not seeking me. You don't even mention my name anymore. You're ashamed of me when you go in the marketplace. Wherever you go, you don't, you're not bold with your witness. Why are you cold? Why are you cooling off? There's been a change, and the change is not on his part. But God is spewing out the lukewarm so they can get back on fire again, so they can get fired up 
And that's what's going to happen to the church when they're experiencing the first three and a half years of the tribute. When they realize that the bride company, when they realize some of the saints have been caught up to God, or I should say it this way, when they realize that the, some of the saints are gone off the earth, and I don't even know if the church is going to recognize that, be honest with you, because the church is asleep. The church is so asleep, I don't even know if they would recognize if they're brothers in Christ that went out on the first trip. I don't even know if they'd recognize that. That's how asleep the church is in this hour. Something has got to wake up the church. Something. And according to the scripture... It's going to take great persecution. Great persecution. God's going to protect the church during that time, though. He's not going to let the devil have his way with the church, but he is going to allow enough to get the church to a place where it will seek God and be willing to uh, be fed, be willing to be nourished. So... Are you ready to be received by the Lord? Are you ready to be swallowed up in victory, in life?